Hey, Internet. It's me, Steve. Welcome to Rafo. Uh-oh. <laughs> Investiture. It's not what stockbrokers work with, nor is it the act of wearing a waistcoat. It's the third ingredient that make up Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere, apart from matter and energy. Investiture is everywhere. It's the power by which the Cosmere was created. It's the life force found in every living thing. Natural investiture includes the souls of all sentient life. My last video talked about the systems of investiture associated with shards, magic systems like allomancy or awakening or surge binding. However, it's important to note that all investiture originally came from Adenalsium. And when Adenalsium was shattered, that investiture naturally became associated with each respective shard. For example, all investiture in the Cosmere that has to do with preserving something is naturally associated with preservation, even though they may not be aware of or even use it at all. Where this gets tricky is investiture systems that existed before the shattering. Threnody has no shard, or at least not a whole one, but there is a large amount of investiture there. Soon after the shattering, Odium followed Ambition to the Threnody system. They fought in the space between worlds, and chunks of Ambition's power were torn off, and they landed on at least Threnody. Ambition then ran away, mortally wounded, and died and was splintered somewhere else. Those chunks of Ambition eventually, I think, coalesced and became the evil, but there's a lot going on there that actually isn't associated with any shard. Threnody has two main continents, a big one and a little one. Humanity originated on the large continent, but even then, the smaller continent was known as Hell, populated by the spirits of what were believed to be the damned. With the arrival of the evil, a mysterious being or force that decimated most of the population of the continent, humanity fled to live amongst these shades. So what are shades? Basically, cognitive shadows, minds that have been disconnected from their physical bodies. We've seen cognitive shadows in the Cosmere before, but the ones on Threnody are different. Shades are more heavily invested than normal souls, so they stick around, similar to a certain individual from Scadriel. However, that extra investiture is not present in the normal human population of the planet. Only those killed by shades have the potential for their cognitive shadows to linger. Not just anyone will turn into a shade upon death meaning shades somehow charge the soul with enough investiture to overcome the natural pull into the spiritual realm. Basically, they're like ghost zombies. You only turn into one if you get bit, and then withered, and turned to dust. From what we know of other cognitive shadows, the shades on Threnody behave differently. For one, they seem to have lost most, if not all, of their memories and personality. This wouldn't be a problem if not for the fact that they, unlike other cognitive shadows, can directly interact with the physical form of other humans. And by interact, we mean attack and wither, eventually turning the body into dust. For some reason, shades on Threnody will only attack if one of the three simple rules are broken. One, don't run at night. Fast movement will draw the attention of the shades, and their forms will shift from white to black, their eyes changing green as they activate their earth sight. Two, don't kindle flame. After a short disorienting period, the shades will enrage and attack the nearest fast motion. And three, don't shed the blood of another. Their eyes turn crimson, and they swarm the person who did the shedding, moving on to slaughter everyone in the area. These were originally based on the Jewish laws of the Sabbath. Is that why shades tend to avoid pigs as well? These rules also tie in with the planetary symbol for Threnody. This signifies purity. This stands for silver. This means do not run. And this represents both blood and the red stars that can be seen in the Threnodite sky. The only way to combat and protect yourself from shades is through the use of silver, which creates a shower of sparks whenever shades come into contact with it. However, that contact changes the silver on both a chemical and spiritual level, rendering it useless. Silver dust is also used to reverse the effect of a shade's withering touch. Either poured directly onto the skin or mixed with a liquid and drunk in more extreme cases, this restores the skin to its original pink and hale state. If the withering has gone too far, the silver will stop that progress, but it'll leave the affected body parts shriveled and blackened. We don't know if silver on Threnody is invested in any way, but Brandon has said that silver does have a Cosmere-wide significance. Because of the lack of shard on Threnody, there is no stable perpendicularity, no bridge between the physical and cognitive realms. It's known that any perpendicularities that do form are morbid in nature, so they probably have something to do with the shades. Now, theory time. 
obvious spoilers foreshadow the silence in the forest of hell, as well as the Stormlight Archive. We know the shades of Threnody are more invested than normal human souls. So I think the perpendicularities form when a large group of shades attacks a large population of humans. That would create a large amount of investiture in a fairly small, concentrated area, forming that cognitive physical bridge. Also, I think that extra investiture is the reason why shades become shades. It forces the cognitive shadows of those killed by shades from the cognitive realm back into the physical, which causes a similar effect as what happens to Spren, or at least Sill, on Roshar the loss of memory, and basically sapience. That's why a cognitive shadow or splinter from another world wouldn't immediately become a shade on Threnody. That investiture doesn't have the right intent. Another thing similar to Roshar and Spren is the possibility for bonding. We see in the Stormlight Archive that a bond with a human eventually allows the memory and personality of the Spren to return. I argue that Silence actually has a similar bond with the cognitive shadow of her grandmother. Old Grandmommy's shade has retained some of her memories because of that bond, so she doesn't do the normal shade thing and just murder everybody. The deeper you dig into the Cosmere, like by watching my videos, the more you recognize the importance of connection and bonds. Be sure to subscribe, because my next video will be going into this in more detail, specifically the bonds that we see on another shardless planet. If you're curious, check out Six of the Dusk, so you can read and find out.